whose passing was um, one year on Tuesday, the 19th of November, and indeed we say that may her soul rest in perfect peace. My name is Thelma Illums, and um, before me this beautiful Saturday sunny afternoon, like some people would like to be so excited about, like my colleague Rikiki, is um, Dr. Tunji Alakija. It's been quite a while. Or should I say it's been a minute? <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you again, sir. Thank How you are very, you? Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, so like we always do, I'll tell you a bit about who Dr. Tsunji Alakija uh, is. He is a medical officer working with the Sickle Cell Foundation, Nigeria, Idara Basuri. Uh, he graduated at the College of Medicine, University of Lagos, in 1977, and then proceeded to the USA for a postgraduate course. He's worked for the Lagos State Health Service Commission at the Pediatrics Department of various hospitals, Massey Street Children's Hospital, FA General Hospital, and Unikan Health Center, till he retired in May 2016 and then joined the Sickle Cell Foundation Nigeria. He is the pioneer founder of the Pediatric Sickle Cell Clinic of Epe General Hospital, which was founded in 1992, and also the pioneer founder of the Sickle Cell Clinic of Unicorn Health Center Lagos, and a trained genetic counselor in sickle cell disorders. His special interests are care and management of children with sickle cell disorder. Once again, you're welcome to the Inspiration of the Neighborhood, sir. Thank you very much. Again. Today on the show, I know it's one of the complications that we've mentioned, you know, in past episodes. And need I say this, it's the 22nd episode already. Who knew time has gone by so quickly? Priapism is one of the complications that we have treated time and time again when we talk about um, complications that come with persons with a sickle cell disorder. However, today we're going to delve right into it. We're talking specifically about preapism, what it is, how it comes about, how to manage it, perhaps if there's some way to manage it. You wonder why I'm, uh, I'm speaking in that tone in a couple of minutes and how to actually treat it and stay off it. So, um, Dr. Alakija, what is prepism, really? We are aware that prepism is one of the complications that come with persons with a sickle cell disorder, but what is it exactly? Uh, Priapism, by medical definition or scientific definition, mm -hmm. uh, we can refer to it as a sustained erection Okay. of the male sexual organ, the penis, okay. for at least a minimum of 20 minutes. Mm. Anything more than 20 minutes erection of the penis in a man is what we call priapism. Okay. And really the word priapism mm. comes from the Greek priapos. Uh -huh. Some may not know it. Priapos in the good, in the good old days was a kind of a, a god, G-O-D, small g, mm. god of fertility in the Greek times. This Greek uh, god of fertility was supposed to be a very, very short person. And he was now endowed with a very, very large sexual organ, penis. Mm. Uh -huh, so that's priapos. And mm. so it is from that one we get priapism. Okay. A sustained erection of the penis for at least 20 minutes. 20 minutes? And not even less is a problem. No. Wow. Okay. So um, I just want to ask, really, before we start to talk about, um, you know, how it actually begins, especially with persons with sickle cell disorder. But is it only persons with sickle cell disorder that can actually suffer preposition? No. There are some other conditions where we see this same erection of the penis painful. Mm. For instance, those who have diabetes, some mm -hmm. of them have preapism. Okay. Those who have untreated a kind of hypertension, mm. they can also have it. Okay. And in some other blood diseases, we also see priapism. Mm. But it is more common in sickle cell anemia. Okay. And like you know, sickle cell disorder is not only sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is a full blown. Yeah. So it's more common in the SS than like the SC, S thalassemia, mm. and so on. Okay. So we find a lot of it more in the SS. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But not every person who suffers the sickle cell disorder or the anemia suffers preposition. No, no, not everybody. So what could cause it? Now, to start with, I've said that it's more common in sickle cell anemia. Mm -hmm. Honestly speaking, we really don't know what causes it. 
Mm. That's the bottom line. Okay. There may be theories here and there. Right. We still need to do research into it. What really causes it? Mm. We see it a lot and it's very, very embarrassing at times. Mm -hmm. Apart from very, very painful to the uh, patient. Right. It's the kind of thing that many people don't want to show even to the doctors. Mm -hmm. It's embarrassing to them. Yeah. Some have fear here. Will I die? Will I die? Will I die? Fear of death is also part of it. Mm -hmm. And so this is a very, very one of the greatest complications we see of sickle cell disorder. Okay. And, but we really don't know what causes it. Mm. And it's important for us to know what causes it. Right. If we are going to have an effective preventive measure, yes. preventive drug, or even treating it, mm. we must know what causes it. And this is where research comes in. Mm -hmm. And so we are asking that there should be support for research mm. into what causes preapism. Okay. This is where we need the political will of government right. to put more money for research into something like this, mm. which is very embarrassing. Right. Not talking about surely AS, marry AS, and this kind of, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We need people to concentrate on research to know what causes preapism. Mm -hmm. Because as we'll see later, it comes with many, many severe complications. Okay, so are there signs or symptoms, though, you know, before one becomes, you know, before preapism actually becomes full blown? Okay, let me quickly say this preapism has two aspects, actually. Okay. There is one we call minor priapism. Okay. There is one we call major priapism. Okay. Has that anything to do with the ischemic and the non-ischemic? No, no, no. Okay. It's just based on the length of time the penis is erected. Mm. We use four hours to divide them. Okay. If the penis is uh, shrunk for up to four hours, not more than four hours, mm. and it comes back to normal, we call it minor priapism. Okay. Anything up to four hours. Mm -hmm. If it is more than four, four hours, hours okay. we call it major priapism. Okay. And within the minor priapism, anything up to four hours, if it comes frequently every week, like three times a week, four times a week, mm -hmm. like almost every day, mm -hmm. we now call it stuttering, stuttering priapism as mm -hmm. part of minor priapism. Mm -hmm. So it all it means that for stuttering, within four hours, mm -hmm. it will go off. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't go off for four hours or more, mm -hmm. sometimes for 12 hours it's still erected and painful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes for 20, I've seen a case at a major hospital where they brought the case for 48 hours. It has not gone down. Mm -hmm. And I was really, really mad at the parents. Why, why didn't you come early? Mm -hmm. Don't you know the complication, impotence is there, sterility is there, and many other things like that, as we'll see later. So it's a question of how long is it off for, on, on for. Mm. If it is more than four hours, it's a major thing. It's mm. not something you play with. But the fact that it's below four hours or around four hours, mm -hmm. does that necessarily mean that you're safe? No. Mm. You see, when it is minor mm. and you don't treat it well, it can then go on to major. major. Late. So that most of the cases of major that we see, there are signs. Mm. This person has not really been doing well with it. Mm -hmm. Signs that, hey, minor is getting more. It's mm. getting more. One day to become major then it becomes major for 6 hours, 12 mm. hours, it's still erected. Mm. And so before you can get major, you would have gotten some signs of minor mm. that has been happening for some time. Okay, so is there a way the minor can be managed so that it doesn't, you know, um, okay. graduate to the major? I think so. Mm. Number one, when there's a minor and there, or there has been minor preapism, mm -hmm. number one, it usually happens, you must know, in the night time, not mainly in the morning or right. afternoon. It's okay. in the night when the patient is sleeping. Mm -hmm. Let's say between 12 midnight and 4 in the 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. It will wake the patient up. And then for some time it will be there. Mm -hmm. At that time, the patient can take a shower. A cold shower has been very useful for many of them. Mm -hmm. When they take a cold shower, number one, try to urinate. Let Tell the patient to try to urinate mm -hmm. so that less water is in that area. Okay. Drink plenty of water at that time mm. to encourage more urinating. Okay. And take some tablets to kill the pain. We have different kinds of tablets to release the pain, but most of the time the pain doesn't even go. Mm. So these are some of the little things they can do at home. Okay. And then quickly bring the patient to the hospital as soon as you can in the morning. Mm. And those are the little things that can help. Okay, so I, I really want to ask, uh, when is... It, would you say it's alarming enough to say 
oh, I need to see the doctor, because you make it really sound really light that someone, you know, is erected for as long as four hours, and you say it's minor, like, oh, okay, it's a common thing. I'm wondering, is it even normal for you to stay erected permanently for even 30 minutes, let alone four hours? What are you waiting for four hours? In fact, the, the mother or the parent should bring the person as soon as possible. Okay. Let us say that. Mm -hmm. But two in the mo in the night, it's not going to be too easy for many okay, because people. because you had said it happens more at night. More at night. Mm -hmm. Most of the time between 12 and 4. And so in order to manage it till dawn, till well, you dawn. can actually see the doctor. You take a cold shower. Take a cold shower. And then you take lots of water so that you can pee. Pee and pee more. Mm. Take little brisk exercises like walking up the stairs. Mm. Not too vigorous. Right. But a little brisk exercise can help a lot also. Mm. Okay. So these are things they can do at home before 6 in the morning, 7, okay. and then come quickly. Don't wait for a day or two or three days. Mm -hmm. Come immediately right. as, soon, as soon as the dawn is, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and then we'll know how to continue like that. Okay. It's 13 minutes gone past the hour of one, Lagos. You're listening to Surviving Sickle Cell, a show on your number one family radio, 92.3, Inspiration FM, and in partnership with the Sickle Cell Foundation, Nigeria. We are speaking with Dr. Tunji Alakija, a medical officer working with the Sickle Cell Foundation Nigeria and prepism in sickle cell disorder is what we have been talking about long erection of the penis for as long as four hours and even more it's a big big issue if you do have questions comments okay the number to get through to us is 0700 923 923 923 if you cannot get through to us via our phone lines you can also get through to us via our whatsapp platform on 0813 Six one nine three seven one. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. On WhatsApp is zero eight one seven three one three six one nine three. Okay, um, Doctor Lakija, I'd like you to just take us through some of your experiences with patients with prepism. Tell us, you know, what that has has been like. The mother, the mothers in particular, mm. have been very, 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 very worried. Mm. You know, in Africa. So, if I get you correctly, prepism can actually happen to children, it, it, not just adults. Oh no 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 no! Okay. From the age of five years. Oh. Yeah, from the age of five years, it can happen really at any age. Mm. But most of the ones we see mm. is from the age of five years to let's say thirty-five years. Mm. But note, it can happen at forty something. Mm. It can even happen for the first time in a man of fifty. Mm. So there's no age limit. Okay. But most of the ones we see. Books also will tell you between the age of five, five, mm -hmm. uh, five years and 30, 35 years. Okay. So that can happen at any time. Okay. Most of the cases I've seen have been in children. I work with the children really mm -hmm. from sickle cell. Okay. And many come once a while with this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And the mothers are super heavily worried. Who wouldn't be? Yeah, <laughs> who would be? Because anything that has to do with the sexual organ, yes. nobody, everybody's worried. Mm -hmm. And so we see some of these children and the mother is very very worried they tried everything it's not going they want to know will this thing kill my child will my child be able to have his own children mm -hmm. all those kind of things so these are some of the uh worrisome parts of it mm -hmm. worry that will this child be able to marry and mm -hmm. have his own children fear of death will this will this thing kill my child mm -hmm. is there any permanent cure if there's a cure, is it going to be permanent or will it recall? So we tell the mother that mm. luckily there is at least one drug mm. that we have been using with good effects. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to be seen as if to some trying to market the drug, mm -hmm. but the only drug that has been very, very useful for many years has been this salbutamol. Salbutamol. We also use it, as you know, for those with asthma. It comes even in in, in the inhaler mm. as Ventolin. Okay. Salbutamol is the same thing as Ventolin, really. Mm. And it comes in tablet. It also comes in, in the inhaler. Okay. But the only thing is that the ones we've been using in the earlier days, we don't see it marketed again. Mm. And so we begin to look at it because it works for only very, very short, like six hours only. We want something that will work almost for the whole day. Mm -hmm. That is the long acting slow releasing okay. and so we had that for many many years now slow releasing long acting salbutamol uh we call it vent max it comes under the name vent max mm -hmm. 
But for the last three years, it's been out of market. Mm -hmm. We buy it from London and they don't even market it again to us. So what we are trying to do is to produce our own locally here mm -hmm. in Nigeria, mm -hmm. which we are now doing. Oh, yes, uh, even at, this, at the uh, Sickle Cell Foundation, we are doing that now. Okay. But we want to test it and see that it's up to standard before we start marketing and shouting about it. It's mm. called Vent Max, okay. long acting, slow releasing Ventolin or Salbutamol. Okay. That one really, really helps to prevent even the minor preapism. Okay. If the thing is just starting and you use it, it prevents it from going the full length. We've mm. seen that. Mm -hmm. And if patient, if patients can be on it for quite some many days, one month, you may not find any preapism for one month. We've seen that, mm. so there is a drug we can use for okay. preventing it. Okay. All right. Let's take this call. I think we already lost it, but please do call back. The number is zero seven hundred nine two three nine two three nine two three on WhatsApp is zero eight one seven three one three six one nine three. You did mention something very important about fears or concerns that come, especially with mothers as mm -hmm. regards mm -hmm. their sons mm -hmm. and when it comes to potency, mm -hmm. you know, when yeah, they grow yeah, up, yeah. can they become fathers? Yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. So uh, can you clear that fear? In Africa oh. most mothers want to carry their grandchildren. Oh. You in Africa? <laughs> <laughs> well, mother doesn't want her grandchildren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but more with, with African mothers. Okay, uh, I would say I agree with you uh, in this with, time. Uh, so <laughs> anything that has to do with inability of their children to marry and have their own children, mm -hmm. it worries the mothers a lot. So can preapism actually affect the person? Oh yes, the, the major preapism. Mm. Mind you, I'm talking of something that has been there for more than four hours, sometimes 12 hours, mm. sometimes 24 hours. Mm -hmm. It's not been relieved. And when you come to the hospital, we do all the best. Most of the time, we don't get it released immediately. Okay. We may sometimes have to even give blood transfusion, ex especially the exchange blood transfusion, mm. what we call exchange blood transfusion, to reduce the number of the hemoglobin S mm. portion. Sometimes you may need to do what we call a shunting operation. Mm. Only the neurosurgeons can do that in which you shunt a lot of blood away from the penis, which which is really storing so much blood there. Okay. A lot of blood is there and it's not going. Mm. A lot of arteries are bringing the blood, but mm. the veins are not taking it away. Mm. So that is why a lot of, so sometimes you may need to aspirate. In fact, we do it a lot. We get a big syringe with needle, not a small, the big one. And you mm. put it into the penis mm -hmm. and you suck out, you inspirate a lot of the blood it's a bloody operation mm. and then sometimes again the surgeon may also just take a kind of scalpel mm. on the penis itself the, the top part cut and it. cut it and release a lot of the f of the blood mm. and after that you now do a shunting operation mm. in which you now divert a lot of the blood to other areas mm. so we want to release a lot of the blood and oh my it's, it's a bloody operation in not being able to release help mm -hmm. quell the imagination of myself and a lot of people actually listening right now is there a time where you ever get to forgive me for lack of a better word mm -hmm. explode well it will not explode mm. the patient may get extremely uncomfortable mm -hmm. and that's why we need to bring him to the hospital we put him on a drip we give very very powerful painkillers mm. we also need to give something to release the anxiety because the patient is anxious mm. haven't I mean, the, 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 the organ is just erected and painful for 12 hours, 24 hours. He is very, very anxious. Mm -hmm. You need to give something to relieve the anxiety. Mm -hmm. Give something to release the pain. Re give a lot of fluids, sometimes by mouth, but most of the time by intravenous. Mm -hmm. And then give blood. That's people who have access to doctors. Who have access to doctors. In the, in the event that you do not have access to what, a hospital, to a clinic, to a doctor, and it's just been on for over four hours, which is major at this point. Mm -hmm. What could happen? What's the worst that could happen? The patient will not die, let me say that. Okay. The, it's not a question of death. Mm. The patient will just be in severe pain and crying and shouting. And then he needs to take mm. a lot of fluid by mouth. Mm. But then there's a limit to the fluid you can take by mm. mouth. Right. You know, by, by IV you can give him a lot. Mm. But by the time you take even three bottles of Coca-Cola, one, two, three, your stomach is already big. Mm. Uh, so, but give as much as you can at home. If you are in a rural area and there is no access to a hospital, do the best you can do. Mm. Uh, but the patient will not die really. Okay. 
It's 21 minutes gone past the hour of one. Oh my goodness. It's the Auntie Francis's birthday today, darling. I haven't seen you walk past, but I have seen your your your, your better half, should I say. Happy birthday to you, darling, in the midst of all that you have heard this afternoon. And um, preapism as a complication in sickle cell disorder is what we have been talking about. And he has said so much. Only this time, we're, we're, we're talking, you know, about... The men, this could happen in boys, this could, you know, affect their potency, you know, to become fathers. So we're going to take a break now. When we come back from the break, Dr. Tunja Alakija will be telling us if there's any complication in sickle cell, okay, um, that affects the female sexual organ. We'll be right back after this break. Don't go away. Surviving sickle cell. Uh, yes, you have been listening to the show before we went on the break. Preapism in um, sickle cell disorder is what we have been talking about. And before we went on that break, we said we were going to ask Dr. Tinji um, Alaki just simply, or oh, maybe not, if there's any complication in the sickle cell disorder that affects the female sexual organ. Is there? Um, naturally, you will think that uh, the clitoris, mm. which is the female. Uh, will also suffer the same thing. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, yes, okay. the clitoris should also be able to suffer the same kind of thing, but I've never seen any. Okay. Books don't even describe it. Right. It's very uncommon. In all the years I was in the medical profession, and especially sickle cell, mm -hmm. I've never seen any case, one case of a lady saying that she has this kind of preapism in the clitoris of mm -hmm. a female. Right. But Theoretically, we will see it might be possible, mm. but we don't really see it. It's probably rare. Yeah, very rare. So have you honestly never heard, though, or seen any report, be it what, on the print, um, on television, or anywhere, where you hear, hear cases of a, a man and a woman being together sexually, and then the man is sort of locked inside because the female organ sort of locked his own male sexual organ or something like that? You've never heard that? Mm. We'll hear it in folklore. Folklore? Oh no, I, I, I have personally seen a report like that where, you know, the man cannot get out anymore. I'm not sure medically what is responsible for that. You've never heard of that? Well, if, well we have, now, now that you're talking of um, preposition, mm. it's possible mm. that at the time they are having the, the, the sexual relation, that mm. preposition comes in there. Mm. So it's, that is possible if it is at that time mm. that they're having this and the man has maybe never had it before mm. and he's having it for the first time at the time they have said so it's possible mm. that, well, that could happen. it could happen mm. and then because of the swollenness of the penis and everything mm. he may find it difficult to withdraw mm. so it's possible but i've never really come across such kind of thing okay. that's why i'm saying that maybe in folklore they tell us of this of mm. those occult kind of thing mm. uh, okay but the last thing i'll say is this Minor, we divided it into min minor preapism, less than four hours. Yes. There are drugs, vent max, I call it salbutamol. Mm -hmm. It prevents it. If you can be on it for a long time, you may not have it for uh, as long as you're on vent max. It is the is the real drug, salbutamol, slow release, long acting. Is this affordable? Or is it one of those really No, 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 drugs? it's affordable. Okay. But we don't just see it again. But mm -hmm. at the Sickle Cell Foundation, right. we are now doing a local pre preparation of it. Okay. And I think very soon. It should be, be out. It should be out. For the major preapism, mm -hmm. we don't try medications at all. It's surgery. Mm -hmm. For the major one, we don't use vent max, mm -hmm. salbutaminol. The surgeon has to do number one, aspiration of as much blood from there. Mm -hmm. Number two, irrigation of the whole thing, flushing it with saline and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Number three, a shunt. Mm -hmm. It's only a surgeon that can do that, mm -hmm. which now diverts a lot of blood from there to another part. Mm -hmm. So these are bloody things, but that's mm -hmm. the only... And by the time you do that kind of bloody operation, mm -hmm. the risk of erectile dysfunction right. is very, very high. Mm -hmm. The risk of sterility is very, very high. The risk of potency is uh, lower. Everything is high. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of men who've had this kind of thing, mm -hmm. not able to perform again. We see a mm -hmm. lot of them. And it dissolves their marriage a lot. Mm. So it's not something you deal with uh, casually. Mm. Once there is major preapism, go to a hospital mm. and let them do a surgical operation properly. Right. And that's the only thing that can give hope to okay. you. Thank you so very much, Dr. Tinja Lakija. We appreciate you for always sharing your wealth of knowledge with us. It has been a surviving sickle cell on your number one family radio station. We really have to go with.
completely out of time. Join us same time next week, 1 p.m. on Saturday for another episode of Surviving Sickle Cell. And in the meantime, I'll leave you this one. It's important. Bye to